Good morning. Welcome to Bazaar Morning Call. I'm Lata and with me is a school girl, <laughs> Sonia Shinoi. <laughs> okay. She just dressed herself as Cinderella today. And uh, there is Anuj who is now going to buy more green shirts. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's uh, uh, stick to business because it looks a little grim when you look at the inflation numbers. Uh, the headlines are uh, striking with a five-year high in the headline inflation. And the food inflation also perhaps a five or seven year high at 14.2%. Uh, what The 14.2 will subside. It is an onion inflation. And therefore, January, uh, we should see the January number receding. But I just want to point out, and we will do that when we analyze inflation numbers, that the non-onion infl food inflation also is high. Mm -hmm. Meat, eggs are both up about 9 to 10%. And uh, pulses are up 15%. So these are not going away when the onion crop recovers. We do have a uh, food inflation, but separately there is also a core inflation, which is excluding the food item, excluding the fuel item, whatever is left. They're usually services, uh, education services, medical services. You know, medicine prices have gone up, tel telecom, transport and communication has gone up because telecoms have raised prices. So that has taken that X food, X fuel price uh, uh, index up by 20 basis to 3.7. We should worry about that because that will stay on. But what we should also see as positive is that whenever you are able to push up and this X food, X fuel uh, inflation will go up in January because we yesterday discussed cement prices. We've heard about steel, a little bit about autos, uh, railway uh, fare hikes. So it will continue for a bit. But all this boosts the EPS of companies. Yeah because it's nominal uh, inflation. The nominal EPS goes up. So there is that positive as well to prices uh, going up. But the biggest positive in which all these numbers are coming is the global backdrop. Now the world is definitely moving towards a post-trade war uh, period. So one truce has gotten signed, a couple of more are awaited. And you, the Chinese data today that's awaited is expected to be very good. So look at the way you're seeing a, you know, a big splash of green across Wall Street, across Asia. We will partake of that. So my sense is while interest rate sensitives will sulk for the moment, there is enough reason to buy the tip. Okay, enough reason to buy the dip. Lata, morning, Anush, morning. And the SGX Nifty now is, you know, indicating that the start will be well in the green. It's up almost 25 odd points. Both FIIs and DIs bought in trade yesterday. So FIIs bought about 70 crores. DIs bought about 50 odd crores. I just want to point out a couple of stocks. A, Infosys saw over 1,000 crores of delivery buying yesterday. So this market is in a mood to reward good earnings. And uh, let's see whether that continues. It was the biggest gainer. Today you have stocks like Indusind Bank and Bandhan Bank that report their numbers. And Indusind Bank has gone into its numbers very strong. It's up 25% in the last three months. Uh, the expectation is, as Abhishek was telling us a while back, that you know loan growth will be in excess of 20%. Margins will be strong. So let's see how the street positions itself for that. And the other big positive is crude is now at a five-week low. So that is also an incremental uh, you know, positive data point for us. Putting all of this together, let's see which way the street heads. Uh, Anuj, morning. You know, you've been making this point for a while that now perhaps the time has come for the mid-caps to start participating and they have in the last few days we've seen outperformance yeah. but how do you approach that today do you think that trend could continue yes uh, uh, Sonia good morning uh, Lata good morning uh, well uh, you know for, for starters we'll start at this uh, one two three four five hopefully hopefully if we have even ten I mean how, how, no, how we much? hardly need anything uh, I think we, have, we are almost there so I think we should start there at one two three four five uh, the bank nifty still has this unfinished business uh, uh, at new high and I think on that perhaps this Old rate sensitive, uh, you know, underperforming. Uh, you know, the the risk, uh, the word that you will hear a lot now is the risk of stagflation, right? I mean, the, that inflation is higher, but not accompanied by growth. So you know, but the delta is inflation high, and the delta is exactly. growth lower. So you know, so not very inflation happy. in itself is not bad if there is growth. But uh, so, so anyway, that's a different debate altogether. But <clears throat> the mid cap outperformance, Sonia, that started at some point in December last year, I think has legs to go. But on that, uh, I've just written a blog and you should read it on cnbctv18.com, by the way. Uh, there's a risk of now market moving to some junk stocks as well. Okay. i tell you why. Because if you see what's happened over the last, uh, this month itself, the Nifty is up 1.3, the Junior is up 1.7, mid cap is up 2.5, and small cap is up 4.3%. As you move down the quality spectrum, returns are getting larger. Now, I have no problem with this as of now because, you know, 
mid caps and small caps have gone through a brutal bear market. So some kind of mean reversion is always possible. But you can't keep having this kind of outperformance continuously for mid caps and small caps. Uh, because what a Bajaj Finance and HDFC Bank won't do is blow away your money. Mm. But the risk that you have in a lot of s small caps is that you know you get into them because you know the momentum is strong. But when the momentum dies down, then there's there's no exit. So that's the test right now. You know, over the last uh, two years, if you have been in quality stocks, you have done really well. And if you're still in these stocks, now you would see your portfolio would underperform because all of a sudden stocks will start hitting circuit, 20%, 15%, 20%, and all of a sudden it will look like this this uh, kind of a party. So. Uh, I dare say that a lot of quality stocks entered bubble territory over the last two years mm -hmm. and some migration to growth was needed and that's what you're seeing. But you have to be clear about the kind of mid caps and small caps you're buying. Uh, you should be buying them because you see growth in them and not because only because mid caps and small caps are going up mm -hmm. and just buy into anything. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, for, uh, for today, I think it's anyone's call because uh, once the market completes unfinished business, it sort of consolidates a bit before making a fresh sort of expansion move. So one, two, three, four, five, and after that, perhaps some consolidation, and then the market starts one more journey towards that uh, 13,000 target, perhaps at some point during this pre-budget buildup. Okay, well, uh, on that very optimistic note, there's a new target to work May with. I put one more point, uh, which I didn't want to confuse when we were talking inflation. Mm. Yesterday, the operation twist officially ended mm. because the Reserve Bank switched bonds with the government of India. Mm. They uh, uh, gave the government of India their near-term bonds and bought from them longer-term bonds. Now, what this means is when the bonds mature next year, government will not have to return mm. because it remains with uh, the RBI. Basically, it eases their next year's borrowing program, but it also means that you will not do then you can't buy bonds both from the government and from the market. So the market today will uh, also labor under the assumption that there will be no more buying of longer term bonds by RBI. Mm -hmm. So there is a double whammy for longer term bonds. Okay. Just one more point uh, on a personal note. Uh, <laughs> uh, today is, uh, you know, our ticker head Sudarshan's birthday. So happy birthday to Sudarshan, yeah. one of uh, uh, channels pillars of strength. Oh, absolutely. I mean, for uh, the longest time, you know, I often am blind to what is happening in the rest of the uh, uh, 12 by 12 space. And I'm only looking at uh, yes. uh, the ticker below because that's life for us. So Sudarshan really keeps the channel ticking. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, let's kickstart the show on that note. It's going to be a good day. At least that's what the SGX Nifty is suggesting. But here's a look at what our wise experts have to say as we head into trade this morning. So, Has Hari Narayan of GM Financial is our expert for the day. He says while the overall price point for the mid and small caps is better than it was a year back, they retain their bias towards large caps in the medium term, though certain stocks in mid and small caps look quite attractive. He says their analysts have identified 12 non-large cap stocks offering reasonable risk reward to invest and in for simplicity, they segregate them into two buckets, growth at a reasonable price and value stocks. Suhas says the 12 stocks are Alembic Pharma, Ashok Leyland, Bharat Forge, Chola Mandalam Finance, Canfin Homes, Chalet Hotels, InfoEdge, Mindtree, Natco Pharma, Sundaram Fasteners, Team Lease and VIP Industries. Oh, that's quite a list to work with so early morning, especially when the mid caps are having a party. Uh, we've got more equity opinion for you. Surendra Goyal of City says the investor mood is bearish given the broad based slowdown and high valuations. Market has a lot of questions on what the government can and will do to help the situation. Investors also worry about what happens if flows slow down. 2019 was helped by good domestic mutual fund and FII flows. Only a handful of investors are willing to go contrarian with supporting arguments being valuation premium to emerging markets has reduced and low base should help. All right, let's give you some money market views then and what to expect from that space. Almost at 71 to the dollar yesterday. So Bhaskar Panda of HDFC Bank says that the United States has dropped the currency manipulator tag for China ahead of the trade deal signing. 
Oil has also eased after Gulf tension subsided a bit. Robust inflows continue into Indian markets as big names raise foreign currency funds. Retail inflation in India had come out higher than the RBI range. Given these conditions, he expects the dollar INR to trade in a range of 70.65 to 70.85 for today. Okay, on bonds, Bhaskar Panda says, since the CPI number has come much above expectation, bond yields could rally further. The benchmark 10-year bond yield could fluctuate between 6.59 to 6.69 today. Well, I also heard numbers like 6.75. Hmm. Okay, let's talk about the global queues. The big highlight, of course, being crude now at 64. Here's Mangalam with the world view. Absolutely. For us, the big highlight is crude at 64. However, the rally on Wall Street continues at a record high for both the S&P 500 as well as the Nasdaq. S&P 500, of course, hit a record high purely on optimism of uh, US-China signing the trade deal on 15th of Jan, which is tomorrow at the same time. US has dropped China from currency manipulator list. So that is a positive as well. Remember, five, years, uh, five months ago, they had added China to the list of countries manipulating their currency. The Nasdaq hit a record high because of two strong stocks. Tesla, higher by about 8.5% after Oppenheimer, a brokerage firm, raised their target price on Tesla. And Apple continues its rally at a record high for that stock as well. The European markets, however, were mixed. We had the German index as well as the French index lower. The FTSE was higher on account of a weaker pound. However, the key point out there to watch out for would be geopolitical concerns because there have been anti-government protests in Iran after the Ukrainian flight or plane was shot down unintentionally. The Asian markets, however, reflecting positivity from the Wall Street, most of the indices at the high point of the day. And that's what the SGX Nifty is indicating as well. We have the Chinese Yuan, which is uh, broken past the 6.9 mark, which is the highest level that we've seen since August 1. The SGX Nifty indicating a very strong start. Okay, okay thank you very much uh, for that. That backdrop may perhaps overwhelm uh, the negatives that we may get because of uh, the higher inflation. So just to put that numbers yet again, at 7.35, the headline inflation is a five-year high. Uh, food inflation is the biggest uh, contributor with 14.8%. Within that, vegetables is 60%. So obviously, uh, some 250% uh, jump in onions is the biggest culprit. Uh, and uh, what you need to know outside, that is outside vegetables and onions as well, food inflation has picked up for meat, eggs and uh, pulses. So basically the protein band. And finally, non-food, non-fuel inflation, what you call core normally, has also gone up from 35 to 3.7%, largely because of telecom rates rising. Now, how does all this uh, bake into bond yields and the Reserve Bank rate action going forward? A Prasanna Chief Economist, ICICI Securities primary dealer, joins in, as does Amandeep Chopra, Group President and Head of Fixed Income at UTI Mutual Fund. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, Prasanna, uh, what is the trajectory here after? Is the 7.35 a flash in the pan? Are we going down? What's the inflation trajectory here on? Um, good morning. So I think we will get to one more print above seven percent uh, in in January. Actually, the the impact of telecom tariff rise has only been uh, uh, has only been transmitted partially. So I think the full pass through uh, will happen by January. And uh, although onion prices have started coming down, uh, I still think uh, the rest of the food complex has also uh, uh, gone up. And, and I don't think there is any any let up in uh, cereals and pulses. Uh, so therefore, we expect one more number above 7%, and then subsequently it could come off. Uh, but still, on an average, uh, if you look at uh, this quarter, I think the average could be anywhere between 6 and up to 7%, which is nearly 200 basis points above the RBA's trajectory. Uh, subsequently, into the next financial year, we do expect this to come down as the vegetable prices draw down. Uh, but by and large, I think it will be probably the second half of fiscal FI21 before we see any inflation reading the 4% or below handle. Okay. Okay. Do you still expect a rate cut in 2020? Uh, as of now, we are still retaining a, a residual expectation of a residual cut of 15 to 25 basis points. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do think the probability has definitely come down. So what we would do is we would watch out for growth numbers. And uh, if growth does start picking up durably into the next financial year, I think then uh, we would remove that expectation of rate cut.
Okay, remove the expectation of a rate cut. Amandeep is also with us. Amandeep, how do you see the bond deals move now? They've already risen to 6.6%. Um, do you think these rising bond deals may be countered by more operation twists from the RBI? Good morning, Sonia. Actually, for the bond markets, you've seen two negatives uh, you know, uh, since yesterday. One clearly has been the high headline inflation print, and second, there's been a pause by RBI in its operation twist. So, you know, they did a private twist uh -huh. with the government of India yesterday, which also sort of would dampen the sentiment in the market. You know, our expectation is that given uh, the negative direction on uh, headline inflation, uh, we may expect RBI to announce an operation twist any time now. But uh, uh, in the backdrop of limitations in how many more Operation twist can now be really carry out well into the budget, which is the next big trigger. I think the 10 year is more or less going to have a negative bias. So I would not be surprised to see a uh, uh, sort of a sure. big opening gap as far as the 10 year deals are concerned today. Okay. Uh, Prasanna, good morning. Uh, you know, uh, one tweet I read from an economist was that forget rate cuts. Uh, if this print continues for next two or three months, uh, there would be a genuine case of a rate hike. Uh, uh, do you do you think that's uh, that's a genuine case? No, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, as has been pointed out, I think a lot of the rise is because of food, and within food there are uh, elements like vegetables which can reverse quite quickly. Uh, of course, there is also a durable rise in food inflation, but that is something which has to be welcomed because food inflation over the last couple of years was very low. Uh, that apart, if you look at food inflation, I mean, we do think there have been a bunch of price hikes at the turn of the calendar year. Once that gets reflected, after that, we do think that core inflation will also flatten out. So our, our expectation is that core inflation will probably settle around 4.5%, and then headline will also gravitate towards that number. Uh, I think at that number, I don't think it warrants a rate hike unless growth picks up. And uh, obviously, uh, we need to see growth picking up to beyond 6% for a couple of quarters before the MPC can start thinking of a rate hike. Okay, uh, Prasanna, uh, Amandeep says that in spite of this massive switch announced yesterday, 42,000 crore, there can still be operation twists, you think so? Uh, well, our, our calculation is that the bonds maturing in FI21, I think RBA had around 900 billion. So 300 uh, billion, they did, uh, or rather 260 billion, I think, if I'm not mistaken. They did the twist operation and then another 420 billion which means that probably around another 200 billion worth of ammunition could be left with them. And, and therefore, we could still expect one or two more such operations. But the thing is, I think, like Amandi pointed out, I think market also knows now the ammunition is running down. So the only way they can continue doing it is if they start selling uh, 2021 bonds or, or beyond, uh, which I think will start putting pressure on the short-end deals. So I do think from, from the point of view of this particular operation, I think our days options are limited. Uh, of course, that doesn't rule out them buying the 10-year or the long-end bonds outright. Uh, that is also possible into the next financial year. Okay. Amandeep, what is your own view on the fact that given the spike in the inflation rate, what could the RBI do in its February policy? I mean, are you still expecting a rate cut? Oh, no, Sonia. We never expected a rate cut. In fact, after the last policy, uh, our view uh, was broadly around an extended pause by RBI. I think, like I mentioned earlier, and I still reiterate, the bar for RBI to cut rates into the next two or three policies is very, very high. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, given the sort of inverted V-shaped inflation trajectory, there will be some bit of optimism around, uh, or at least some expectation around RBI and likely to cut rates. But I think in our view, uh, uh, it's very unlikely. Okay. All right. If you can give a, you said there will be a gap up opening in the yield. Uh, what is your best guess today, Amandeep? Today and henceforth, say, for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> I think that's a tough one. Uh, I would expect at least a uh, six to eight odd basis point, uh, you know, gap up opening. So and six point so seven is possible, or six point quite likely. Yeah, I think we could we could see six point seven, uh, you know. Uh, within this uh, week itself. Oh, yesterday we had Today someone saying 6.8. That's ruled out, you think? At present, I think there is a fair amount of uh, support uh, for the tenure at 6.775. Okay. But uh, but again, uh, if we continue to see any you know more negative development around the rupee or uh, you know, otherwise, I guess you could actually even see the 6.75 levels potentially okay. soon this week. Prasanna. Okay. 
Uh, well, I, uh, I mean, I do think yields can move up by five to seven basis points at the opening, but particularly I think the 10-year benchmark can actually underperform because it's any day overvalued. So as a range, I would think from now till the budget, uh, uh, the 10-year could trade in the 6.6 to 6.8 range. Okay. And uh, you said that, you know, uh, the inflation, uh, the, the headline in level could move up higher. Um, you think the MPC will be quite cautious in the next policy meeting as well, even if rate cut or no rate cut? Do you expect the MPC to move slightly with a cautious tone? Uh, okay, so I, I didn't say it will move up. What I said was it could remain at a similar level. Uh, mm. so because although vegetable prices are coming off, some of the core components are moving up. So net net it could remain at the same level. Uh, so, yes, I think they will be cautious, but I think if they also look at the components and if they strip out onions and vegetables, they will know that underlying inflation is still comfortable. Uh, so, I, I do think, I mean, uh, uh, the NPC is smart enough, I, I hope, and that therefore they would guide the market mm. that this phase of inflation rise is actually short-lived mm -hmm. and will quite quickly transition to a five handle by, by April or May, and then subsequently it can subside further. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, there are lots of events between now and the next policy. Uh, not the least is the budget, uh, and we don't know how big the deficit is going to be. We should also remember that uh, the global food inflation has snaked up to a five-year high. Uh, global meat prices uh, are even higher. So, uh, I mean, there are many dynamic moving parts over here for uh, the MPC to consider. Uh, many events. We'll uh, discuss that later. Thank you very much, Prasanna and Amandeep. We should prepare probably for uh, bond yield closer to 6.7 6 today. 7. Okay, oh. 6.7 on bond yields. That will be interesting to see. Uh, uh, let's do one thing. We'll take a break. Uh, when we come back, uh, we'll have our top 10 stocks. अपने क्लाइंट के 360 डिग्री पोर्टफोलियो रिपोर्ट को मॉनिटर कीजिए इंस्टेंटली आई आई एफ एल ट्रिपल ए टैबलेट